Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about finding joy in dementia, changing the stigma with Patty LaFleur. Patty is the former care partner to her mom, Linda, who had dementia. Despite her dementia diagnosis, Patty and Linda found joy every day. They were always laughing, singing, dancing, crafting, and finding things to celebrate. Patty taught kindergarten for nine years before quitting her job to take care of her mom. Now Patty continues to tell their story and share their love on social media as a way to raise awareness and change the stigma around dementia. How are you doing today, Patty? I'm good. How are you doing, Jason? Very good. Thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Finding Joy in Dementia, Changing the Stigma. Thanks. Thanks for having me today. So I just wanted to start by um, saying that uh, my goal is to share our story. We share our story on social media, but I just love any opportunity I have to share our story and really raise awareness of dementia and Alzheimer's as they are becoming more prevalent in the United States um, and hopefully help to change the stigma. Dementia doesn't have to be the end. Um, my mom and I found so much joy together despite her diagnosis. And so I'm excited to share how we did that together. So I'm gonna start by reading one of my favorite quotes. And this quote was really helpful for me as I thought about the care that I provided for my mom. To love a person is to learn the song in their heart and sing it to them when they have forgotten. And it's by Arnie Garborg. And to me, this really summarized the way I thought about the care I provided for my mom. I knew my mom, I knew what she liked, I knew what she loved, I knew what she didn't like, and that really helped me to be able to shape the environment that I provided her and really allowed us to find joy and love together. So this is our story. This is, I'm Patty. I am, as Jason mentioned, I am a former care partner and a former kindergarten teacher. And I truthfully believe that my development and my understanding as a teacher really helped shape me to be a better care partner for my mom. This is my mom, Linda. She was the best mom ever. And I felt like that really helped me to build on the relationship we already had as her care partner. I was adopted and so I really viewed this as an opportunity to give back the care that she provided for me. She had dementia for eight years before she passed. She had mixed dementia and she had type one diabetes for over 50 years. She passed in March of 2022 and I am just continuing to share our story and really help support other caregivers in the same role. To start with, I'd like to really um, emphasize the language that I use in describing the relationship I had with my mom. So I described the relationship that we had as care partners. So instead of using the word caregiver, I use the word care partner to really describe that reciprocal relationship. It wasn't just me providing care to my mom. It was a mutual relationship where there was give and take. There was always adjustments and thinking about what was happening and I was adjusting the environment to meet her changing needs. I truthfully believe that when we are intentional with the language that we use, it can really help to structure that partnership that we had. It also was a mindset shift for me. So when I viewed our caregiving time together as a partnership, it helped remember, remind me that my mom had a voice in this situation. I was constantly thinking about what she would want and how she would want to be treated. And that's how I shaped our caregiving. It wasn't just me doing things to her. It was really us building and learning together. In addition, I think it's really, it was really important for me to think about how, how I was feeling in the relationship. So there 
was two people that really needed to be thought about and was this the best situation for both of us that was something that i continually thought about as her caregiver was this environment the best space for both of us was i able to continue to do this because there was such a partnership between us and the partnership is really how i was able to find joy and love in caregiving we found joy every day and to do this, I always thought about how I would want to be treated. So my mom wasn't always able to communicate her wants or needs as her dementia progressed. So I always thought about if I was in her, in her shoes, if I was in her space, how would I want to be treated? How would I want to have things done to me? What kind of questions would I want to be asked? What kind of decisions would I still want to be able to make? And by doing that, it allowed me to create an environment that I knew that she could be happy and successful in. It was also important to me that I thought about who she was as a person. So we still traveled. This is a picture of us from Disneyland. We danced together. We sang together. We had art therapy and music. We did things that I know that my mom would love. And that's how we created the joy and the relationship that we had. So how, one of the big things to me in providing an environment that, that allowed her to feel happy and to create joy and to change the negative stigma around her life just being over was to create an environment or a care partnership that supported my mom in maintaining her dignity and independence. Every person wants to feel respected. Every person wants to feel loved. So to me, in order for us to find joy together every day, she needed to feel like she was a person in our house that was also contributing and was allowed agency to make her own choices. To, so to support her dignity and independence, I always provided my mom choice. I always allowed my mom to still have a voice. It may have looked different as her dementia progressed, but she still always had a voice and an avenue to name her feelings and to make decisions that she still could make. I always asked her to help. So my mom was a stay at home mom my whole life. And to her, it was very important to be a contributing member of the family. She loved cooking she loved cleaning so i always thought about what were ways for my mom to help even if it wasn't necessarily helpful in the long run like she might fold the same towel 40 times but she felt like she was being helpful and contributing to the household and so household and so that allowed her to feel joy and feel agency in in our environment and feel successful it was also really important to me that i built on what i knew about her so she had been my mom for 30 plus years at that point so that was 30 years of really understanding and knowing who she was as a person i knew what she liked i knew what she didn't like i knew what were triggers for her and what were things that just brought her joy. So I took what I knew about her, our relationship, our connection, our love, and I really used that to structure how I created experiences and opportunities for us to connect. So we'll dive into each of those and kind of talk deeper on how I allowed for this to happen in our environment. So the first thing that was really important to me in allowing for her to find joy and to find her voice was offering her choices. 
in the beginning of her dementia diagnosis, that looked really similar to how it had for her whole life. She was making her own choices. She was able to, we were going shopping and she was picking out her clothes and she was picking out her sheets. This is a picture of her picking out her sheets. She was really just from a broad range of things, she was able to really still make choices. But as her dementia progressed, it looked very different. So something that was really important to me was allowing her to make choices whenever possible. So she helped pick out her clothes, she helped pick out her food, she helped pick out what activities we were going to do together. And at first it was lots of options, but then as she progressed, it turned into offering her two options. Would you like to have pancakes or would you like to have toast? Really giving her that choice. And then even more as she continued to progress, it looked like providing visuals for her. So getting out the box of pancake mix, getting out the bread and letting her pick between the two. And that could look like saying the words, that could look like pointing to what she wanted. And then as she continued to progress, it looked like even saying, do you want eggs? And she could respond with yes or no. So I really thought about how I could provide these opportunities to really allow her to continue to make these decisions. I don't wanna live a life where everything is being done to me. So I wanted to give her as many opportunities to use her voice to still be herself. She dressed herself as much as possible. She was picking out her clothes. At first she was picking out all of her clothes. Then she was just picking out the shirt she would wear. And you could visibly see when I allowed her to make choices, how she felt. Something that my mom often did when she would say, do diddly, do diddly. So sometimes when I was offering her choices and she would pick a choice, she would get so excited, she would even <laughs> sing or do a little dance because she really knew that she still had agency even until the very end. Same with choices um, or same with activities. My mom and I did lots of activities together, which I think really also help build our connection, but I let her pick the activities. Would you like to listen to music or color a cat? Like she really didn't have time throughout the day that I was really making her do things as much as possible. Of course, there were things like showering, there were things like going to the bathroom that we just had to do and that my job in those situations were to frame them from a positive aspect, but also even there giving her choices. When we would take the take a shower, I would ask her, do you want to use this towel or this towel? I mean, something as simple as just letting her have choice, even in the hard times, really helped us to find joy and build on our relationship. The next really important thing to me was that I always focused on what she can do and not what she couldn't do. So I, it's important to name the things that she was unable to do independently. She was unable to take herself to the bathroom independently. She was unable to shower independently. It was important for me to know those things. It's important to know so that I can support her, but it was my job in those situations to think about what she could still do in that process. So she may not be able to go to the bathroom independently, but she could still unbutton her pants or she could still pull her pants down or she could still help me get up. I always was thinking about where she was in her stages and what she was still able to help with or able to still participate in. And by thinking about what she could do as opposed to what she couldn't do, it was a mindset shift for me. It helped me to frame what she was doing from a positive lens. And when I am more positive, 
then she's able to mirror my positivity as well. She's able to recognize that that is something that what where my mood is and how my mood was impacting her as well. In this picture, you see that she is helping me baking. So my mom loved baking. I mean, I think by the end, she liked cookies more than she liked the baking <laughs> process, but she still loved baking. So it was my job and my pleasure in that job to provide her opportunities to still help with the things that she loved. She's holding the, so I would pre measure out all the ingredients. She would help me dump them in and she would help hold the mixer. She could still help with so many things. And by me recognizing that, I mean, you can just see in that picture, the joy she has oh, yeah. in her ability to participate and help. So it was constantly thinking about where she's at and what her next step is and what she can still participate in. It was also important for me to just build on what I know about my mom. I was so fortunate that I had such a positive relationship with my mom, but even with caring for my dad, it was a little bit more challenging to find maybe our connection pieces, but you can build on things that you know that your loved one loves. I knew that my mom loved cooking. I knew that my mom loved crafts. We had grown up in a home where she was constantly crafting or quilting or sewing. I mean, she was constantly doing those things. She was really big into holidays. So it was really helpful to help her still find ways to participate in holidays, build excitement about holidays. It was also important that I was adaptive in those activities. So I wasn't having her sit down and quilt the quilt. That wasn't something that she was still able to do. I wasn't having her even like thread the needle to sew or use a needle to sew, but I was finding small things that she could, you know, do in and out, or I was finding other crafts where she could paint something that she loved. So it may have been a picture of a flower. She loved flowers and gardening. So then she was painting with watercolor. And as painting with watercolor became challenging, I found things where it was just water paint and she was just using the water paint to paint the flowers. So it was really thinking about who she was and what she could still do and creating these experiences where we could connect and she could still feel successful. It wouldn't have been creating an environment of joy or finding joy if I would have not been sitting next to her or not been adapting the project to meet her needs that would have just ended up with frustration for both of us but by really thinking about where she was and what she could do i could really help her find these situations that allowed for us both to feel really successful she really loved puzzles so thinking about instead of doing a hundred piece puzzle how can i find a 10 to 25 piece puzzle that's going to allow her to feel successful and really feel like she's doing something that she loved. In addition, I always just thought about fun. Everything was always about the process, the connection, the time that we got to spend together and not the product. It was never about her doing something right or there being a perfect way to do it. It was about this connection we were able to build. I often get asked by other caregivers or other care partners, like, how did you find these moments to connect? And I think that these moments don't have to be anything big. It doesn't have to be this huge activity or this huge art project or something long and drawn out. It was really looking for those small moments of five to 10 minute activities where we could sit by each other, 
we could laugh and we could really enjoy the moment. Here, she, we had apples that had, were going bad and I put out some paint and she was doing some apple stamping. It was just really about finding what we had and finding those moments to connect and find joy because it's hard. Caring for a loved one with dementia is hard, but there are moments to connect. I think that it's also super important as we talk about this for me to name that our relationship mattered. So above all, we had a positive relationship. We had built all of these connections. She had um, really found these opportunities for providing joy for me. And so as I thought about caring for her, I thought about where are those moments where I can really lean into our relationship? Where are those moments where we can really feel safe and connected with each other and create those experiences? It's also important to name that a theme through all of my care partnership was our connection. I truly believe connection over everything, connection over the activity you planned, connection over traveling. Like my mom and I traveled, we had so much fun, but it wasn't, we weren't more connected when we were traveling. Oftentimes the times that we were really the most connected or the moments that I think back on now since she's passed and I feel just like a warmth in my heart were really some of the moments we were just sitting on the couch together. We were holding hands. We were finding ways to connect even without communicating. She had gotten to a point where she wasn't able to communicate by the end of her diagnosis, but we were still able to connect. We connect. We were able to hold hands. We were able to sit next to each other. My tone of voice, my body language, we were still communicating even without words. I also just really want to name another question that I get asked often was, was it ever hard? It's so easy to live in this land of just really finding joy and really, we were dancing, we were laughing, we were traveling, we were living, but it was still hard. Dementia is hard. You're watching someone that you love and care about lose pieces of themselves. So for me, it wasn't as hard for me to lose pieces of my mom, what was really hard for me was to watch my mom lose pieces of herself. She had days where she would cry all day. She um, had really bad sundowning and confusion, but I think that this was another space where it was really important for me to think about the love and the joy. My job in these moments of hard, were to be her safe space, were to sit near her, were to connect with her to make sure she felt safe and loved. Every person in the world wants to feel safe. Every person wants to feel loved. And so my job in finding joy and creating an environment that was responsive and supportive to her was to meet her in these moments, acknowledge those feelings, and then reassure her and just really think about that connection and how that connection is allowing us to live and love together. So that is the big part of my story and I think it's really important to just name that we were, we had a really positive relationship and in that positive relationship, I was able to step back and think about a lot of these things. But I think it's also important to think about that, the themes of building independence and connection and supporting each other where you're at on your journey together. So thanks for listening to our story. Absolutely. Thank you, Patty. Uh, wonderful. Um, really was. I, as you know, I've been following you on social media for some time, so the opportunity for you to share, that's uh, that means a lot. So thank you. I know our those that are watching this today, they'll be touched. Um, I know that for sure. 
Um, a couple of questions. Can you explain what intentional means as you associate it with communication? Yeah, um, I think especially as I think about my background in education. So I think that my background in education has really allowed me to really think about how important it is to be intentional with the words that I pick. So when I'm saying that I'm being intentional in using the term care partner, to me, it's important that I am thinking about how I am framing my words or my um, approach with my mom from a mindset where there is still a person inside of her dementia. So it was really important to me that I thought clearly and I was able to articulate that to even just myself, what mm -hmm. our relationship had changed into. So our relationship has clearly had clearly changed a lot in th the 35 years that we spent together. and by me clarifying it from being a caregiver to a care partner, it really helped me to think about the partnership and connection that we had had for the past 30 plus years and how that allows me to create um, an environment that was responsive for both of us. I think yeah. that answered it. I'm like, oh no. man, I don't know. <laughs> no, that was that was good, yeah. I was just Did you spend all your time with your mom? the uh, with me so when yeah. she lived with me yes so when my mom first moved in with me i was still teaching so i was still okay. teaching full time so i had a caregiver that supported me so that i could still teach and then care for her but as her dementia progressed i ended up quitting my job so that i could care for her full time um our partnership was really strong and so just in thinking about what would be the most supportive for her and for me um quitting and caring for her became the the tool the the theme for us what worked best yeah do you think that your unique your unique approach slowed the progression of your mom's dementia i think that by really thinking about who she was and allowing her those opportunities. I do think it allowed her to live kind of in those mid stages for a long time. My dad was caring for her in the early stages and I think that his approach potentially did speed up the process actually, if I'm being honest, um, just because he was try he was doing the best he could with the tools that he had. But when she moved in with me and I started really thinking about how she could still make decisions and how she could still help around the house, um, her communication actually improved in living with me. She went from not really talking all that much to talking more. And I really feel like she lived in that mid-stage space for a really long time because I valued her voice and her agency it, mm -hmm. as a member of our family and our community and our home. Um, I do truly believe that. She actually lived in the late stages of, for a very short time. And I think that that is probably because of her having these opportunities to still have a voice. Yeah. Last question, Patty. Did the approach that you have, did this just come to you or was this, um, did you undertake some formal care um, training to, to with these techniques? Yeah, so I, it's kind of a combination of a couple things. So some of it I really truly believe came from my background in education mm -hmm. and specifically in early child development. Um, because of the way that I structured my classroom, I constantly thought about what my students could still do and not or what my students could do and not what they couldn't do. And so I was constantly structuring activities, conversations, academic 
parts of our day that allowed them to feel successful. And by seeing how supportive that was for someone whose brain was developing, it just seemed natural to think about that with my mom. I also want to just clarify that I'm not saying that I was treating her like a child in any sense. I was just really thinking about where she was from a brain development standpoint. It's also just how I think about people. I think about my friends. I always am thinking about what my friends can bring to the situation or who they are as a person and how I can support them in the place that they are. I would also say the other thing that was really supportive for me in thinking about how I especially communicated with my mom as she was living with dementia, um, specifically the parts around choice. My mom participated in a music therapy class pretty immediately after she moved in with me. I just had found one and she did it online. And by observing the music therapist and her approach and the way that she structured things with my mom, I was able to see these moments of success. And I was able to use that to really adapt how I approached my mom, which was really supportive and beautiful for both of us. And then just as I started to do those things I started to offer her choice like I had mentioned um, earlier like she would dance and she would sing and so it was visibly clear to me that those things were supporting her in feeling safe and happy and loved yeah thank you again Patty Um, how can people find you yeah so there's a couple things so I'm really big on sharing our story so I share our story on Instagram Instagram. So I am Miss M I S S Patty P A T T I Cake C A K E on Instagram. On Twitter, um, I am Care Patty, once again, P A T T I. And on TikTok, um, I am Care Partner Patty C A R E. P-A-R-T-N-E-R-P-A-T-T-I. So those are like the big places that I really share our story and videos and tools and tricks and things about grief. It's just kind of a whole bunch of things about caring for my mom and who I am. It's wonderful, by the way. Real quick, I'm going to just intercede here and say you need to follow. People need to follow you. It's it, it's inspiring as uh, as individuals that have uh, loved ones that have you know uh, cognitive decline um, and just to watch this it's it truly is inspiring. Yeah, I, you can really in video see the connection. You can mm-hmm. really see how offering choices, how adapting, how I really by me structuring the way that we did an activity like baking or any of those things, you can really truthfully see the joy in on my mom's face. She isn't necessarily always able to verbalize it, but she was always able to smile or respond in a certain way. And it's truly was beautiful to see how responsive she was in those ways. Um, I am also available. Um, to connect via, I have a website, it's carepartnerpatty.com, which is C-A-R-E-P-A-R-T-N-E-R-P-A-T-T-I.com. I have a phone number, 425-518-3735, and then by email, it's just my first and last name, which is patty.luffler at outlook.com. P-A-T-T-I dot L-A-F-L-E-U-R at Outlook.com. Excellent. Thank you again, Patty. Um, as far as Knowledgeable Aging, you can go to our website, knowledgeableaging.com, see all of our upcoming and archive webinars. If you're on YouTube, I encourage you to subscribe, uh, type in Knowledgeable Aging. We update that several times per month. If podcasts are your thing, you can find us on Apple Tunes, Spotify, etc. Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar, and this is Knowledgeable Aging. Thank <music> you.